Hi everyone, thank you so much for watching again today. We're going to be discussing a very, very important topic. We started the last episode and we tagged it, learn to say no. And I shared a story, which is my personal story, my experience while I was in school. And this is the continuation of that experience, although an entirely different year. This time around, we're already in our finals and the same event, dinner. Okay, is anything wrong in going for a dinner? No. Is anything wrong in going for a birthday celebration or any form of party or any form of celebration? No, there's nothing wrong in it. But what is wrong is when you're not sensitive to when to move, when to say no, when to say yes, when to turn your back on some invitations, then that is the problem. That is where the problem lies. A lot of persons, you know, have lost their virginities in so-called birthday parties because they were not sensitive to where to go. A lot of persons had a lot of trauma, a lot of issues because they went to the places they ought not to go. All right, so back to my story. So it happened that um, we're supposed to have a dinner again and it was outside the school. I was so happy to go. I had a brown dress this time around. Last time, remember, it was a pink dress. This time around, it was a brown and a cream dress and made my hair, was ready to go. And we went, we had a good time, we had award nights, we had food was always not a problem in my department. So now the issue was when I was supposed to leave, I didn't leave. There was a bus that came, who was supposed to the bus was supposed to convey us back to our hostels. But I was talking with some of my friends, and they were like, the bus is going to come back. So I was like, once we just get to the hostel, we're already eating to the full, to the brain. We'll just sleep, right? So let me just keep talking. So I was talking with them and all of that. And the first bus was, by the time I got out, like, oh, okay, I really wanted to go now. They said the bus was full, but the bus was going to come back. So I relaxed. And that was how we waited and waited and waited. The bus did not come back. What time was it now? It was almost 11. 11 p.m. You know how dinner is now. Most times you finish late. But if I had gone at the appropriateness of time, I would have been in the hostel. So my dear, I waited and we were just few left. That was the dangerous part. We were just very few left. Some of my colleagues, of course, in the same department, same level, were around. So I was just with some of them. Of course, there were ladies there too and guys. So by the time we waited and waited and we saw that the boss was not coming, we decided to go out ourselves and look for uh in it's it was in Ibadan, so you can imagine how the road is going to be at that time everywhere was mm, everybody had gone to their houses to their rooms and we could hardly see a vehicle all we saw was a bike now to cut my story short so we we're supposed to go we finally saw bikes and then we stopped it so i was supposed to be myself and one of my colleagues was a guy another girl who was also my set and another guy, so we took bikes together around 11. By that time, I was already past 11. In my mind, I'm like, hey, what if my mom calls me and say, oh, Diola, like she usually had, so how are you? Will I be, she we would, I couldn't even be able to pick her call because she wanted like, ah, where are you at this time of the night? You should be in your room sleeping. And I was so scared. I was just praying, Mama, God, please help me. I'm sorry. I should have left. I should not have even come. I was so scared. So I entered the bike. The guy was there and we were moving. Now, the shocking part is we met a place on the road and with the touch from afar, we knew that, hmm, uh, let me call it in our Nigerian term, our policeman is on the road and he was trying to stop the bike, stop, stop, stop. And the bike man increased the speed and moved and the policeman eats on the move. The policeman eats the bike man with what he was holding while he was on him because he knew that this bike man was not ready to stop and our bike swayed right left and right and thank goodness he got his balance again i'm started to move my mind was here like oh Luma, god have mercy but to the goodness of god i got to my room and my hostel and i knelt down and said lord thank you thank you for saving me this last time i will not do this again you know, so what am I saying with my story? It is, let's be sensitive to where we go. Let's be sensitive to the things we consent to. We don't always have to say yes. No matter how enticing or how beautiful the offer is, 
check it out. And if at all you have to go to some places, be sensitive, be sensitive. And I trust that God is going to help you. And most importantly, if you don't have Jesus in your life, you are um, shortchanging yourself because the Holy Spirit helps you to know where to go, what to do, what to talk to, you know, when to say yes, when to say no. Because you don't know. I didn't know I was going to have such experience, you know. But by the help of the Holy Spirit, you know many things and you are able to stop yourself from a lot of danger that might be on your way. Thank you so much for listening to us again. We appreciate you so much. This is Once Upon a Teenager. Bye.